Hello, my name is Michael, and today we're going to be talking about People Also Ask. What is it you say? Well, People Also Ask is a really cool tool, or just a feature in Google search results that gives you the upper hand on your competitors. A lot of SEOs, digital marketers, and other individuals out there who are producing content don't necessarily look at this particular feature as a tool. And today I'm going to change that. I'm going to make you aware of this and probably give you a little bit of insight on how to use it uh, simply because it's really awesome. So for a little context, people also asked first launched in, I believe, 2015, where it was able to show uh, a few related questions that really didn't have too much logic to it, but it really evolved and took off for the end user. Google saw a lot of feedback from, from, uh, from users in the search results, and they were able to adapt it and embrace more of the machine learning aspect of it and produce these things dynamically across the board based off of user intent. So what's really cool about this is that it's a feature that produces questions that are similar to what the query is you're performing. So in other words, it may give you question-based answers that you didn't otherwise know to ask. So that in itself saves a lot of time, a lot of energy, and gives you more direction in what you should be producing as a digital market or an SEO so that you can further expound on your current content. So enough of that, let's dive into what people also ask and see kind of what it looks like from the search perspective. So today I'm just gonna say chocolate. So if I'm searching for chocolate and I'm not necessarily sure what I'm searching for in regards to chocolate, I just have a sweet tooth, for example. And I look and I see all these knowledge graphs, local packs, um, tons of snippets and features. Uh, but if you scroll further down, you'll notice that there's this thing called People Also Ask. It's in the form of an accordion style drop down and also questions. So what's really cool about this is when you actually click on that accordion style, you see it as a feature. And in this feature, it gives you more in depth before you actually click through to the result hoping that it's going to provide you with the answer in a more immediate manner, and then you're just going to continue searching within Google. But what's awesome about this is it gives you questions that you wouldn't otherwise know that you wanted to target. So things that you could expound on on your current content or that you can take and, and build additional content or additional silos to target specific to your industry or vertical. Um, not every industry, not every vertical has questions like this built into search results. You may find some queries that you perform in Google don't have these types of features. But when you do, it's like hitting gold in the jackpot. So looking at this a little further, um, you'll notice that as you open more of these accordion style dropdowns, more of the results actually populate. Um, so one of the exercises that I kind of want to convey in this talk is that when you click on these, make sure that you click on the ones that mean the most to you and that you actually are interested in. In other words, I'm looking for chocolate. So where does the best chocolate come from, for example? Or maybe uh, what are the benefits of chocolate? You know, health benefits, for example, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, so on and so forth. Uh, or even, hey, what is the world's most expensive chocolate? So as I look for more and more results, Google's going to adapt uh, to the, the questions I'm clicking on and provide me more relevant content. Uh, so one of the things that's really cool about this is, yes, you can expand these, you can dive in a lot deeper, um, but what's one way in which I can collect this information and make it useful? One of the things that I found that's really cool comes within Google Chrome. All you have to do is go to the store, download it, and I'll show you the proper steps. So it's called Scraper. So if you go to Chrome Web Store and you look for the actual term Scraper and you look for this little icon, which is basically a, a, a flashlight, um, you'll notice that it's basically exactly what it says. It scrapes the web. So it works off of XPath and it's not that hard to actually use. Uh, there's some tools out there like Answer the Public, Maybe you have Moz, maybe you have a couple paid, um, paid tools that you use to scrape things like this for related topics, uh, related phrases, words, so on and so forth. But this is an all-inclusive 
free tool that's already readily available to you. If you have Chrome, which is free, you can easily download the extension, which is free. And all you have to do is just follow these steps. So we've already done some of the legwork already. So we looked at, we looked at the term chocolate. We clicked on some of the drop downs that meant something to us. And I can see we have quite a few results here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and open more of these up just to make it a little more interesting to see if I can get more results. Most popular chocolate in the world. Let's see, uh, the best Swiss chocolate. Okay, uh, most popular bar, chocolate bar in England. Keep going, and then let's see, what is the best Cadbury chocolate? Not so much, maybe famous in Switzerland. That sounds interesting. Uh, you know, keep on going if you want, but I think, I think you get the point. So we have enough here now that we want to scrape them and then actually consolidate these into a list. Seamlessly enough, the Chrome extension is up here in the top right hand corner. It is a little flashlight. It's called Scraper. You don't have to click on it. All you have to do is just make sure it's installed. Once it's installed, just go ahead and right click on any of these terms or questions that you want and then select Scrape Similar. Once you scrape similar, you're going to get one of the results, particularly the result that you basically right clicked on. All you have to do is go into the XPAX path selector area and just remove the number one and the actual uh, brackets here. So the brackets are gone, the number one is gone, and then the rest of the path still exists. Once you click enter, it'll automatically scrape all of the results similar to the one that you clicked on. And in this instance, I had 50. So I had 50 results straight from search results um, that were particular to my industry vertical that I really want to dive into a little more to see where my content falls within answering these questions and how I can best produce content to answer these better than the competitor. Um, so and if you do this right, just one of these bad boys can produce up to 21 unique search results or search pages, um, particularly to this query. So in other words, what I mean is once uh, a query is performed, you can literally show uh, numerous times within multiple scenarios where users are searching for other things as a related term. So ample opportunity, um, huge for visibility, and will produce a lot of results for you at the end of the day. So hope this helps. If you have any questions, leave some comments below and I'll be happy to get back to you on any of the things that you have insights.